So far this season, we've seen what Bloodsport can do against control bots, but what if we fight a vertical spinner? As we've seen time and time again over the years, verts can snap or bend horizontal blades in an instant, so we need to try something new if we're going to go weapon to weapon with one and survive. I'm Nick, sandwich artist for Team BNS, and this is our new thick bar, the Club Sandwich. Taking a vertical hit to the end of a long bar like ours is probably the hardest problem that we face as a horizontal spinner in the age of bite force and endgame. After the tri bar broke last year, the adjustment was pretty easy. Switch to the tougher AR500 steel and shore up the geometry a little to keep it from bending. Designing a replacement for the thick bar, however, is a little more difficult, since it was simply not strong enough to take a hit from Lockjaw. It did win a weapon to weapon exchange with Endgame, but that's because we were able to hit the side of their weapon before they could catch the underside of ours. That's pretty much the ideal scenario for us, but it's never a guarantee. We do still have the key, which is more optimized for avoiding the vertical hit in that way, but the key is older and was made from the same S7 tool steel as the thick bar, while also being thinner and slightly weaker overall. Add in the reach issues that old blade has, and it's clear we need to try something else. So why not just remake the thick bar in AR500 like we did with Try Again and the Classic Bar? That's where our minds went first, but there are a few problems. In this case, where S7 breaks, AR500 will likely bend. A bent weapon is better than a broken one, but then there's also another problem. The thick bar was pocketed. You'd have to be completely insane to try to machine pockets like this into an AR500 bar. It only worked for us because S7 can be machined and then heat treated. AR500 comes already hard. So we're left either needing to make the whole bar narrower, sacrificing horizontal strength, or cut weight using through holes. Unfortunately, none of the AR bar designs we drew up could match the strength and stiffness of the thick bar without making major sacrifices on stability or cost, neither of which we were willing to compromise. A thicker AR500 key is an option which eases the compromise between stability and strength, but it's also more expensive to make, and there's another problem, hardness. Going weapon to weapon means whoever's steel is harder will take chunks out of the other, like our S7 thick bar did to endgame. We'd lose this advantage with AR, and even worse, an S7 weapon like Minotaur or Bite Force would mangle the end of our blade. Some teams like Hijinx hard face their weapon teeth to mitigate this problem, but that requires a lot of experimentation and welding skill to get right. With all of these options looking grim for us, what else can we try? We need hardness at the tooth and toughness along the length of the bar, but with enough strength and rigidity to keep the bar from bending too much. Enter. The Club Sandwich. If you think about the shape of the thick bar like a piece of U-channel, the shape makes some sense because that'll be stronger and more rigid than a flat bar of the same weight. However, it's got weak points along the thin sections. An I-beam is more optimized for a bending stress, but we also still need to hold the horizontal strength for our own hits. So the most optimal shape for the combined loading, then, is something more like a box channel. That's basically impossible to manufacture as a single piece, though and this is the reason for the layered construction. Taking inspiration from Fusion's horizontal rotor, we designed for AR500 top and bottom layers, the bread of the sandwich, with aluminum compressed layers in between. This concentrates the weight and strength at the top and bottom where the bending stresses are greatest. This alone isn't enough though. With nothing constraining them together in shear, the individual layers can bend in parallel like a stack of paper. What ties this design together is the S7 impactors, which have dovetail features to constrain all the layers together in plane leaving the bolts only to compress the layers together in tension, the way they're meant to be loaded. The bolts are really important though, because if the layers were to separate, the entire structure would be compromised. That's why there are 38 of them, largely concentrated out toward the ends. We considered using larger bolts along the whole bar, but with the space available, the ones we could fit would have about the same strength, and distributing the load out to many smaller bolts gave us more freedom when it came to interlocking geometry. All of this comes together to bring us a bar with a total stack height of 1.75 inches, a full half inch thicker than the thick bar. This thickness improves the stiffness immensely. The teeth are also much more aggressive than the thick bar. Because the impactors are replaceable, we went with a 12 degree rake angle to try and carve as much material as possible out of the opponent's armor. This bar also uses a ring as a stabilizer instead of the wings, making the stabilizers less vulnerable to hits and also using that weight to contribute to the overall strength in some small way. The actual making of the bar happened once again with the help from our awesome sponsors. This week we're featuring Send Cut Send. Send Cut Send is an online laser cutting and manufacturing service with affordable prices that's super easy to use. Just upload your design into their online quoting system, pick from their selection of over 130 materials, hit order, and get your parts. Their seamless quoting system and insanely fast delivery services support thousands of engineers, makers, artists, and hobbyists, 
whether they need laser cutting, bending, forming, CNC routing, deburring, or more. There are no minimum quantities and shipping is free, so if you need parts with tight tolerances and high quality craftsmanship, check out SendCutSend.com today. Senkut Sen made the aluminum meat layers for the club sandwich, as well as most of the wedgelets and armor for Bloodsport and Retrograde. They also made the prototype weapons that we tried out on our 30 pound bot last year, which will hopefully compete again later this year. The steel layers came from Commercial Metals Company and their True Shield line, which we'll feature next time when we talk about the Ferris wheel. Many thanks to both of these amazing sponsors for all their help. And with that, one club sandwich is served. Let us know what you think in the comments and give us your predictions for our fight against Minotaur in the round of 32. Thanks for watching and bon appetit.